Previously I made a video about my clicking Seagate expansion 2 terabyte external USB drive pictured here. You may notice it's a bit creakier than usual. Uh, this is because I've already performed the fix to it. Um, the fix uh, entails voiding your warranty that uh, obviously wasn't worth very much to begin with. Now what you do, you take a screwdriver like so. You take the drive container like so. You ram it in there and you pull the worthless thing apart. And inside you will find something that looks a little bit like this. But it will have a hard drive, not unlike this one, mounted inside. Uh, this this is a different hard drive than mine. Um, so, you just, as you can see, this standard uh, SATA mount in there. You pull it out of there, pull off the stickers and whatnot. Uh, you'll find that it's got these screwed into it for uh, vibration dampening. But, you know, basically you just take it all apart until you're left with a bare drive, kind of like this one. Then, you uh, just plug it into your computer. Uh, and that's the fix. I've done that to mine, and uh, I've got no more clicking. Uh, the write speed and read speeds are normal again. Um, basically, it's uh, just the case itself that seems to be the problem. It may not always be the problem in every case, so I'd only recommend doing this as a last resort. Uh, like, if you're in my situation where your crappy retailer only offered you like a 14-day return policy and Seagate, uh, if you contact them, they'll say, yeah, we'll send you back another identical drive. Well, guess what? It's the drive, it's the, it's the casing that has the problem anyway. So they're going to send you back another uh, another defective casing. So really, there's no way to solve this problem. It's a defective product. Seagate shouldn't have released it. Uh, I've tried various fixes, including using uh, USB cables with chokes on them, like uh, I've got one here to show you. One second, please. All right, so over here we have a USB cable that has a choke on it. Uh, I tried one of these. I tried, well, actually, I tried like five different ones from different places that I'd accumulated over the years. Some of them had one choke, some of them had no choke, some of them had a choke on both ends. Uh, all very high quality cables that work with anything else give me proper transfer speeds uh, you know perfectly fine cable but will not work with the Seagate expansion drive um, there were some theories put forward about what the problem is something about maybe uh, power getting shorted out since this is not built well or something, I don't really know. But, as you can see, the drive is now right there, functioning exactly as it should be. I'm doing a self-test on it right now. Uh, I copied about a terabyte of data to it.
as you can see. Short test passed. I'm going to do a, a long test before I conclude that this is the solution to all problems. And probably a couple of other tests just to be absolutely sure since you know you don't really want to lose ter two terabytes of data. Um, but anyway, that's the solution that works for me. And uh, I hope this helps a few people. Um, you can just throw all this away, it's not going to be worth anything to you. Um, oh yeah, one last problem. Uh, for me, I had to go into my BIOS settings and adjust my SATA connection. Um, to be in IDE mode instead of ACHI or AHCI. Um, basically, this means it's, it's a older connection stand or a, a, an older communication standard. Uh, but it works fine, you know, as opposed to just losing a two terabyte drive. Sure, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use it in IDE mode rather than not at all. Um, this was uh, a problem though because Windows, when you first install it, it checks to see whether the drive is in AHCI or IDE mode and only installs the drivers that it needs. Normally this would be a smart thing, but uh, in this case it backfires because you, you want to switch it from AHCI to IDE mode uh, and this means that Windows can't communicate with it anymore. So you need to follow this guide here. Um, switch AHCI to IDE. There is the link. I'll post a, a link itself in the uh, video description. You go down here, you download this registry file. Uh, when it downloaded for me, for some reason, I don't know whether it was Chrome or Windows, but it got renamed to be registry edit roly dot download. So I had to rename it registry edit roly dot uh, reg again. Uh, so you just double click on that. It will apply set, um, it'll tell Windows to load the IDE drivers uh, even though you don't have any IDE drives then you can reboot your computer go into BIOS uh, by pushing delete or whatever or sometimes it's F12 or F2 you know depending on what kind of motherboard you have or laptop well I guess this wouldn't be a laptop problem well uh, anyway you uh, you Go in there. You switch it from uh, you switch the SATA mode from AHCI to IDE, and it um, you won't notice any difference um, aside from possibly like slower read write performance or something like that. But it, it won't be earth shattering or anything though and at least you'll be able to finally use your two terabyte drive or one and a half or whatever size you you got um, then you can just reboot your computer windows will start up fine um, if you get a blue screen when windows starts up it says you know error uh, 0x 0000007b or something like that uh, uh, might be this code here as well. Mine had a 7 instead of a 5. Uh, if you get that still, it means you didn't apply the registry fix properly. So you just need to switch it back to AHCI mode, go back into Windows, reapply the registry fix properly, and uh, go back into BIOS, 
switch it back to IDE and Windows will work fine. So that is how you fix the notorious, horrible um, Seagate expansion drive. Hopefully Seagate will stop producing these very soon, or at least fix them, something. Um, I think that's all I have to say and I'm done listening to myself talk, so I hope this helps someone. Uh, Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if this helped you or if you need any help with the process.